If you use a mobile app to send FT8, for instance, the FT8CN that I reviewed in a previous video, then it's best that you have a proper interface cable between your mobile phone and your transceiver. If you don't, and you're just relying on speaker to microphone coupling, then you get extraneous noise that can cause interference to others on the air and reduce your reception ability for incoming signals. This cable is super simple to make yourself. Keep watching and I'll tell you how. Plus, I'll have a demonstration showing how it really works. The object of the cable is to connect your FT817's speaker connection to the phone's microphone connection and the phone's speaker connection to the FT817's microphone connection. Because the FT817 has voice operated transmit, you don't need any other connections. How it works? Well, all I've got is a coupling capacitor from the speaker into the phone's microphone. You could have an attenuator potentiometer, but I didn't find that necessary. You do, however, need attenuation on the transmit side. If you don't, then there's a risk of overmodulating and causing distortion on the transmission. So I've got coming in from the phone speaker, actually the phone's earphone connections, coupling capacitor, and then an attenuator made of two resistors. This attenuates quite a lot. It's a 220 ohm resistor there and a 47k resistor here. That drops it to a very low level that's suitable for the microphone input of the FT817. If you want more flexibility with adjustment, you could replace this setup with a potentiometer, though I haven't found it necessary. So that's the circuit. How did I build this in practice? To plug into the Android, you'll need a four connector 3.5 millimeter plug. Now, the connections for this do vary a little bit, I've been told, between phones. But in my case, the bit here at the far left was the microphone, not the ground, the microphone. That might be a bit counterintuitive. Then the ground, then the right and left channels. The right and left channels are for the audio coming out. It's okay just to use one of those. And then with the microphone, that is what you need on receive for the FT8 coming out of the FT817 as audio going into this connection and then you can see other stations. Whereas for the transmit purpose you need audio coming out of the tip here. So that's the connections. This is an actual plug. Now you can buy these plugs separately from part suppliers but they are a bit fiddly to solder. And so to overcome that I used a hands-free unit. It had just the two little earphones and then a little plastic box with a microphone in it, no other parts. Anyway, if you follow the wire around, I took apart the microphone bit. I used a screwdriver and a hammer and I was able to get it apart without damaging anything. And that's important because you've got the wires here. It's easier just to leave them be rather than try to unsolder this and solder things to these wires. And on the other side of this was the electric microphone, which I took out. With a multimeter, I probed around and found which connections mated with which pads on the board. And in this case, you only need three connections coming out. The one right here is the audio coming out. I've used the left channel from the tip. And the one on here, and there's another connections which are for the ground and also for the microphone input. I'll show you some more detailed pictures later on under a better light. 
but the basic hard thing is making a connection to these that's robust and without overheating anything. So what I did was I used enameled copper wire. You can get it out of old transformers and the like. It's fairly fine, it's about maybe 0.3 millimeter diameter and that is rigid single stranded wire. So I soldered that to the bigger pads that you can see and then I had that going under the board. You might be able to see a bit of it there. And then that went to the rest of the components. Important thing is because some of these wires are very fine is cable anchoring. There you can see I've used like a P-clip. You sometimes see them with power cords. Because the wire is so fine, you might need to wrap tape around it to ensure there's reasonable anchoring. And I've got that also at the other end. You can see there is a clamp where I've got screws, another clamp. So this bit is the bit that comes from the phone. Then I've got two cables going to the transceiver. This one was also a pre-made plug that I cut the cable short. That's 3.5 millimeters. That plugs into the headphone socket of the transceiver. So that's the audio that comes out and that finds its way into the phone microphone. Then there's the other lead, which is thicker. That goes to the FT817's microphone connection, which uses an RJ45 plug. Now, this might vary with your transceiver, but in this case, I'm only using two wires. One is ground and one is microphone audio input. So that's just a short lead and I've got some good cable anchoring to prevent flexing. So this is physically robust. It should probably be in its own enclosure for serious outdoor operating. Maybe even just wrap it with bubble wrap and put some sticky tape around it. That, that should help. Here's a quick diagram I drew of the plug and where it goes to. Another diagram there of the board that's shaped a bit like a stop sign. Your hands-free thing might vary. You can use a multimeter with a continuity indicator to check what mates with what. Down here is the circuit. And here are the connections looking into the FT817 socket for the microphone. Now getting back to the diagram, what I suggest is just building the receive part first. It's just the capacitor going from the speaker connection via headphone socket into the phone's microphone. And once you've built that, if you put it onto some FT8 signals on a frequency like 14074, 7074, 21074, 28074, then if you hear FT8 signals, you should then be able to see decoding on the phone. Then when you're happy with that, then try the transmit side and there should be enough audio coming through to trigger the voice operator transmit. If there isn't, then play around with level controls either on your phone or microphone gain on the transceiver or maybe even change some of the values here. But I found the values aren't critical for either the resistors or the capacitor. The main thing is that you are getting a lot of attenuation as the levels between here and here are very, very different. And you don't want to overload the transceiver and cause interference. This one here, I've just got this crudely set up, just on receive, not doing transmit yet. Anyway, it's here receiving FT8. I'm tuned to 10 meters. And as you can see, 
lots and lots of stations coming up. Just got the makeshift set up and got a contact with YB8SCP. Another contact with BH4BNQ. Just walked from home down here at the beach. Thing about FT8 is that you can skimp on antennas and still get results. So I'm instead of using my big squid pole, I've just got the smaller one. It's about five meters tall. So I will use my Wade Tenor. Um, that's an antenna I've described in a previous video. Normally use a pedestrian mobile, but today I'll just set this up on the beach. I'll be fixed and we'll see if I can use this to make some FT8 contacts. I'll be using the FT8CN app, Android mobile phone, the new interface cable, and the FT817. The sand's powdery, a little bit firmer now. Even firmer. I think I'll set up about here. That's 28 megs, plenty of activity, so a good band to try. Okay, just looking at the screen and lots and lots of stations. With FT8 and this thing, there's not much to do except to watch the screen. Just calling CQ on 28 megahertz. I think we might have a contact, or at least a call, from Greece. That didn't take long. And there's 73, so I think that means a completed contact. We'll just press the QSO logs. And there we are, SV2JAO. So, yeah, it's just flashing 73 there. And, yep, we can manually confirm that. We'll see if there's another contact down here. I'm trying to make contact with YC7UPZ. And then there's a BH4 there. Not sure if they're calling me. But this is pretty intense. Uh, when I was at home, I had nothing like this sort of speedy response. Actually it looks like that I don't think YC7UPZ made it or could hear me so this might still be trying other stations and it might keep going until it gets a contact. Oh no, there's a completed contact, 73, so yes contact was made. Do you want to have another look of the interface board in nice beautiful daylight here it is i'll just click underneath can that's the soldering i haven't cut some of the leads short enough yet that's a better view there and we'll just do a close-up of the innards of the microphone piece that I pulled to bits. I think we might have another call. While I leave the radio to do its thing, we'll just have a, a wander down to the waterline. Something that we get down here quite a lot are uh, these transparent things. Um, 
they're not actually toxic, toxic, they're not jellyfish. I think they are cast-offs from sea snails, but anyway, just see if we can hold it up to the light. As you can see they let light through. I like jelly, I'm not gonna eat them, but yeah. They're not actually living. Uh, some of the life or remnant of life that we often find and there's just hundreds of them just all down the beach. All right, there's BG4ACY. Now it's got its location, Shanghai, China, so I'm guessing that it looks it up. I'm not sure if it's off QRZ or some other online forum, but yeah, you can see the places that you've worked. Well, 10 meters is, if anything, too easy, so I'll do a bit of a challenge and I'll see how many bands I can make FT8 contacts with. You're hearing just then 12 meters, but then I thought, well, six meters. Let's give six meters a go first. Not much activity on six meters, but there's an exchange there between JH1 and VK3HY. So something's open. In contrast, 24 megahertz is very alive. FT8 doing its thing, you've got more time to watch this sort of stuff. Now that spot over there by the way, at the end of that point, that's pretty close to where I was operating for some of my recent more successful contacts into Europe. Um, from there, you're facing southeast, which is good for long path into Europe. Meanwhile, on the FT8 thing, we've got a call from IZ8VYU. And quite a respectable minus 12 signal strength. I think the screen's a little bit behind because before it's gone through the 73 thing, it's gone to another call, SV5AZP. So we're not quite sure if we've properly completed contact with IZ8 VYU. I don't think we have, and it's given up on calling SV5AZP, but it's now calling JR7IWL. Well, this has slowed down, so I think there might be an issue with the program, so we'll close it down and reopen. And yep, there's an error message, so let us reopen. Okay, we're back in business. Okay, looks like we've got a reply now from YB3 BBF. Finally, a confirmed contact on 24 megahertz with China. 24 meg was a bit harder to make contacts than 28, maybe there's fewer operators, so I'm now on 21 and almost immediately I'm giving a report to 9A2CD, so we'll see how that goes.
Well that didn't amount to anything but it's now OK to LC. And looks like we've completed a contact with OK to LC. Now I should stress that this is 15 metres and if you are an Australian foundation amateur then this is a band that you can use. You can use FT8 and I'm running 5 watts so that's within your power limit. And with the restriction lifted on building or modifying equipment then you too could build a little interface unit like this and after downloading this free Android app you too could be making FT8DX contacts like I am. And as you can see, even with low power, it's very possible. Okay, 21 megahertz was okay, so let's try 18. And a very quick response from JA7AXP. Also notice a very famous call sign, W5UN, in there as well. Okay, so we've completed the contact with JA7. water's getting too close to comfort so I think I need to go up the beach a bit. I've been able to move while simultaneously getting a contact with PA3 PCV. Not having much luck on 20 meters maybe it's too crowded so I might step down to 30 meters given that we're not far off the sunset. Lots of stations calling, but no go on 10 megahertz. Maybe if I called some of them rather than call CQ, I might have better luck. But for now, I'll try 7 megahertz. And very quickly, there is a reply on 7 megahertz from VK4CL. So, pretty good results. I had contacts on 5 bands. That's 10, 12, 15, 17 and 40 meters and as for the stations worked about 10 or 11 contacts um, Europe, Asia um, so and also in, in VK so I don't think this is as sensitive as doing this properly with a laptop computer this won't have as much processing power it will be a bit slower it won't be as sensitive but you will still get quite a few contacts. This multicoloured map is where I was detected on FT8 during my time at the beach. Let's break it down by band. Six metres was just one station, VK3WK, about 60 kilometres from here, on the other side of the bay. Ten metres, a big cluster in Asia, around China, Japan, another big cluster in Europe and a few in the Pacific as north or as Alaska. A similar pattern on 12 meters again lots in Europe, East Asia and even one across to the continental United States. When you look at 15 meters not quite as many in Asia but a big cluster in Europe and a lot more across the Pacific to the US. That shows that higher HF bands are often good for north, south and also daylight paths but as it gets towards dark even if 10 meters is open in some directions then you need lower bands like 15 and 17 meters to propagate across darkness. Speaking of 17 metres, even more in the United States, a big cluster in Europe, even one that looks like the Canary Islands. Now I didn't have any contacts on 20 metres, but we'll just look at that anyway. These are just stations that receive my signal. Well, a lot of people were receiving my signal. Very big concentration in the United States, less so in Europe and even less so in Asia. 
but there's even one there in South America. So I was getting out, but not getting many contacts or any contacts. Now 30 meters, 30 meters, very, very different. None in Asia, none in Europe, basically following a darkness path. And you can see that um, it's very close to sunset here. I've only just got back and 10 megahertz is doing well to the US. So if I persisted there, I might have got more American contacts. 40 meters. Uh, very, very strictly local, just Southeast Australia and New Zealand. So that's our look at a simple interface cable suitable for the Yaesu FT817 or 818. If you've got other transceivers, then you should be able to modify it to build one suitable for those as well. Let me know how you go in the comments below.